Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Warzone Season 5 has just dropped. Now in this video, I just want to take a look at some of the new features here in the patch notes. Gonna quickly go through it, summarize some of the most interesting things, etc. But before we continue, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on, because I'll be making some dedicated videos on some of the new features, which you don't want to miss out on, so be sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on. Also, leave a like and comment down below which one of these features or changes that you are most excited about. But without any further ado, Let's get to some patch notes. So first off, we got the battle pass. We'll be taking a look in game for that. But right off the bat, we got two brand new weapons, which are free, of course. We got a Vanguard assault rifle available at tier 15 and a submachine gun, the RA-225, also a Vanguard weapon available at tier 31. We'll, again, we'll be taking a look at those in game later on. We also got a new operator. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that because I am probably going to suck at it. Now we got a brand new event called Heroes and Villains. And this one looks really interesting interesting and last stand community event this will be happening from august 24th to september 14th it says choose your side and lead them to victory score faction points by collecting villain or hero tokens or by contributing to them at the buy station in all game modes contributing to a faction will also discount one item across all buy stations the winning team's unique weapon blueprint will be given to everyone following the event. Players also have the chance to earn other exclusive rewards like the legendary animated 1 vs 1 calling card, the heroes or villains weapon charm, the conflict spike melee weapon blueprint, the time duality watch, I'm butchering it, time duality watch and more we also got a brand new caldera mode here operation last stand in this limited time mode inspired by search and destroy you can choose to defend caldera by diffusing bombs around the island or sabotage it by detonating the explosives at designated bomb sites witness two different outcomes depending on your performance and your intent to cause chaos yeah you'll have to pick a side some of the things to expect from this mode are a full map mode Players start with their loadout, Researcher's respawn system is activated but players cannot get wiped, and apparently it's raining giant lava rocks. So this is one, so this is one of the things that I'll be making a video on, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Players should keep an eye on the volcano meter for a read on volcanic activity also represented by an increasingly smoky atmosphere. Oh dear, I'm excited for that one. Now Fortress Keep Researchers mode has gotten an update and the player cap has basically been increased. So solos from having the cap at 45, it is now at 50. Duos has also been increased to 50 from 46. Trios to 51 from 45. And quads to 52 from 40. And it also says with this increase in additional players, we have also increased the availability of supply boxes as we have been happy with the pacing of loot relative to squad size. Also private matches will be updated later this season, if that's relevant to you. Now when it comes to maps, this is some really, really cool things and I'll be making a bunch of videos about this as well. Caldera has gotten a little bit of an update or I should say a reworked POI, point of interest. Heightened volcanic activity has been recorded at Caldera with a major geological event occurring with the launch of season five. Battle around a trans Transformed peak as lava runs down the mountainside in all modes and shoots out over the island during Operation Last Call. We also got a brand new PY expansion called Task Force Tyrants HQ. No self-respecting villain would operate without an evil lair. Understandable. As such, Task Force Tyrants has claimed peak and given it somewhat of a hazardous makeover, an interior creek with flowing lava, basalt columns and steeping stones, a giant colorful ornate crest for their secret organization and a beautiful vista looking out over a war-torn caldera. Sounds like I need to book a vacation. We also got a brand new gulag called Boiler Room and it says get back into the match with the new volcanic themed gulag inspired by an old favorite. I'll be excited to see which one this is. We also got new weather and lighting, sun rays through smoke. The storm has cleared on Caldera, the sunlight peeing through the volcano's billowing smoke. Now Rebirth Island has also gotten a little bit of an update with a sunset. Rebirth Island sees new lighting changes as well, featuring a warm and lush sunset casting a vibrant hue over the map. I'm very excited to see this as well. Now something upcoming here is Rebirth After Dark. Rebirth Island will also receive a special limited time mode Rebirth After Dark on Friday September 2nd through Sunday September 4th that allows players to experience this fan favorite experience after the sun has set. We've of course also got a bunch of bug fixes, you can see all those right here, I'm not going to read all of them out loud. 
Now we got a brand new station apparently on the Caldera map. This unique station can be activated for 10k, causing enemy AI to invade the position via helicopter drop. Rewards are lootable by any player regardless of who activated the station, kind of like, kind of like on Fortune's Keep I would imagine. One station will appear per match with multiple possible spawn locations. A unique cosmetic watch skin will be rewarded to players who activate and fully secure the station. You'll see me do that as well. Supply Box UAV. This is a very interesting new kill streak that has been added to Warzone. I should say this has been added, added to all maps and all modes. This new kill streak can be activated to mark nearby unopened supply boxes on the tag map for 20 seconds. This kill streak can be looted via supply boxes or purchased at a buy station for 3k. Activating more than 3 supply box UAVs in a short amount of time will activate an advanced supply box UAV, resulting in a much stronger effect. Supply box types are represented by color, blue, standard, orange, legendary, red, resurgence, and pink, personal. Personal supply box? Okay. Speaking of personal supply box, personal supply box is apparently a new lootable supply box on all maps and all modes. This unique supply box will spawn the player's favorite loadout weapons and reward the player with 2000 XP? So basically it will reward you with the loadout that you have set as your favorite? That's cool. Those have to be rare. Rage, Serum and new field upgrade on all maps and modes as well. Players can use this field upgrade to boost their close quarters capabilities for 40 seconds. Positive effects include movement speed increased by 8%. Damage with melee weapons or while unarmed increased by 50%. Launch distance increased to 3.2 meters up to 1.4 meters while standing. Melee stun power increased by 50%. Now it also does have some negative effects, including players have a louder presence, visible rage effect on the operator, stun and flash vulnerability increased by 40%, and this effect can be countered by the battle hardened perk. Now we got a few quality of life changes. Improve the precision airstrike danger UI notification to be more consistent with, with, with where the airstrike type it is and any nearby enemies that's a very nice fix implemented a fix for precision airstrikes sometimes that hitting near the targeted site instead hitting the player from behind unexpectedly this would occur in rare situations where a player is positioned considerably higher above the target when launching the strike added a danger ui notification if the player calling in a cluster strike a precision airstrike is too close to the targeted site that is very nice that's actually really nice. Gas mask auto slash manual equip setting. Added functionality to the quick inventory menu to allow the user to toggle the gas mask on or off. Note that this option is only available if the user opts into the manual gas mask toggle in the settings menu. We also got a few buy station updates. Of course, a new supply box UAV has been added to the buy station inventory. The buy station inventory will now scroll in order to display all available options. That Hmm. I'm not sure I like that. I think I would appreciate two columns more than one column that I would have to scroll in. Eh, I'm not sure about that one. Especially because of this part. Loadout drop markers remain at the bottom of the list for ease of access because we know how important muscle memory is. If I have to scroll to it, that might be a problem. I guess we'll see how that goes in game. Loadout create UI selection in season. Speaking of knowing how important muscle memory is, added a setting that allows the loadout interface to remember the last loadout that was selected. Oh, plane respawn functionality. Planes will no longer respawn once they have been destroyed. This change does not apply to respawn modes. Example, plunder. That's nice. All right, we got a few perk updates. Serpentine, fire damage no longer decreased. Explosive damage no longer decreased. Players must now be tax sprinting for Serpentine to be effective. However, that change will arrive later this season. But Serpentine has basically just gotten a nerf. Battle hardened, stun and flash resistance increased to 80% from 50% and 70% respectively. Now we got a bunch of weapon changes here and I highly recommend that you go through these yourself because there's just too many and the video would basically take too long or you can check out someone like Jaygod or something like that who really goes into detail with this stuff. However, a few things I will point out that catches my eye is the Cooper has gotten a little bit of a nerf. Same with the KGM-40 seems to have been given a nerf. However, if you like the growl, the damage has been increased to 29 from 28 as well. Some damage range increase and damage will supply has been increased. So if you like the growl from Modern Warfare, maybe you should try it out, try it out and see how it goes. The Grocer from Cold War has gotten a damage increase as well. And the Vargo S has basically been given quite a bit of a buff, I would say. And I think this could go ahead and become a meta weapon. And for the melee weapons, we got the combat shield from Vanguard. It says movement speed scaler decreased to 0.785 down from 
2.8. I don't know if that means it's slower or faster now. Now this one did catch my eyes. The scythe from Cold War. Melee damage has basically been increased as well as the attack speed and the attack interrupt time has been decreased. This seems like a fairly fast weapon now. Also, Dual Kodachis from Modern Warfare basically has been given a nerf. However, the standing and crouch charged melee launch increase has been increased to 2.4 meters off from 1.7 meters, but yeah. But other than that, the other ranges has been given a little bit of a nerf. We got some big changes to some of the snipers here. The flinch decreased on heavy sniper rifles by 11% and flinch decreased on light sniper rifles by 40%. That's really cool. And something that did catch my eye is the Tundra has been given a bit of a buff with some damage range increase and damage multipliers being, being increased as well and the ADS transition decreased. Maybe upcoming Tundra video. Another change that is Kind of significant is the Almaguerra and the Marco who has basically been given, both of them has basically been given a nerf. They're not as good anymore. But like recoil control has been decreased and whatnot, at least for some of the different attachments here. Obviously not for all the attachments. However, for the Armageddon ADS movement speed scale has been decreased in general from to 1.32 down from 1.36. And for the Marco, max damage has been decreased to 32 down from 34. Mid damage decreased to 29 from 30, and mid damage range, however, has been increased to 20 meters off from 15. But yeah, looking at these uh, attachments, it looks like it's been given a little bit of a nerf. However, again, it's for each individual attachment. Another thing that caught my eye is a PBSH 41 hipfire accuracy penalty decreased to minus 15% off from minus 20%, while the damage range has been increased to 25% off from 20%, at least for the SAC 300mm here. A bunch of info about the, like, the muscles and the scopes and whatnot. One thing to keep in mind about the scope is the SVT 40 PU scope 3 to 6 times. Sniper glint has now been enabled, as well as the 1930 variable 4 to 8 times. Sniper glint has also been enabled. And in general, for gun perks, tight grip, sustained recoil control has been decreased to 9% down from 10%. Here we go. Oh? Power. We were all robbed of it. Hmm. So called heroes left us divided and broken. Estimated how dangerous we are. That mistake gives us an opportunity. And for the first time, they'll understand what it feels like to be. He seems a bit too happy. What did he just drop? might have been the new weapon. Okay, well, that basically shows us the transformation of Peak. August 24th to September 14th, choose a side, basically, last stand, season finale. That's gonna be cool, I'll be playing that. Choose your side, kill, scavenge, buy, event exclusive rewards. Okay, those, that stuff looks cool, actually. Ooh, okay, this is interesting. All right, here we have the battle pass. As we can see, we got some operators here. This is the Raul skin. This is the brand new operator, I believe, if I have understood it correctly. However, what I do want to check... Ooh, what's this? Epic blueprint? I'm not sure what gun this even is. However, I do know that there is a new gun at... But okay, that's the gun. The EX-1. So the, this is the blueprint for it, I would assume. The EX-1. Okay, that actually looks 
sick. This looks really, really cool. We should also have a brand new SOG over on Battle Pass level. This R8. 225 almost looks like a world war ii uzi <laughs> if that existed but this is a brand new sfg so it's gonna be cool and i need i need to see this blueprint i mean i need to see this i mean that looks awesome that can safely go on the thumbnail <laughs> but yeah there you have it that is the update warzone season 5 is live and i'm excited again make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on because i will be making a bunch of videos on this you don't want to miss it. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a like, comment down below what you think of these new changes and the patches and whatnot, and season five in general. Are you excited for it? And are you excited for Warzone 2? Let me know. But anyways, like I said, that's going to be it. Hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day and goodbye. I'll see you on the battlefield.